Hello, my friend, and welcome to the 476th episode of the Sales Podcast. I'm Wes Schaefer, the Sales Whisperer, your host. Today we have Tim Shore. He's the author of Get Out of Your Way, How to Eliminate Self-Sabotage and Win Your Life. Uh, I had a great talk with Tim. You know, it's cool doing video. You get to see everybody, and uh, it's a little, it's a better interview, I think, than, you know, doing it over the phone, uh, but you can just tell Tim's just a nice guy. He's passionate about what uh, he's into. We talk about, you know, having a prosperity mindset, uh, why people are afraid of their efforts not working out. Uh, you know, we get into personal development, uh, limiting beliefs, um, a whole lot of things. But um, something that's interesting with Tim, um, he has facilitated over 15,000 hypnosis sessions. He was a clinical psychologist for 30 years. Um, so really interesting guy. You know, I had uh, Dr. Mark Golston, episode 466, uh, with a similar background. Uh, so I don't know what it is with these doctors coming on and, and psychologists and whatnot. But hey, you know, great salespeople are some of the best put together people on the planet. Um, having the intestinal fortitude, you know, to go it alone, to, to get the rejections, to handle the pressure, to meet deadlines and timelines and quotas and, and you know, varying circumstances, um, reading between the lines getting people to take action maybe when they're, they're hesitant to do so and do it without being manipulative. you got to have your act together to do that. So if that's you, you know, give yourself a little pat on the back, okay? This can be a tough road to hoe, but hey, I've been doing it since 97 because I was meant to do it. You know, I've always said, and I learned this from Steve Clark, selling is a calling, serving is its purpose, questioning is the process, and a sale may be the solution. If you can internalize that, and you probably have already, that's what makes you great. But if you can internalize that and live it, you'll be a great salesperson, and the world is your oyster. All right? So um, thanks for tuning into this. As always, if you need some help, I've got it on demand help through Make Every Sale course, makeeverysale.com. If you want to engage every week uh, in our live Monday calls and ask questions at any time in the group, go to the implementors.com and um, join the course there. It's month to month. You can save 50% by joining for the year. Makes a great tax right off at the end of the year, you know, at the beginning of the year, whatever, invest in yourself. Okay. You'll be glad you did. Now let's bring on Tim. Tim Shore, creator of the mesmerizing Mesmerizing, I see it. Mesmerizing. It sounds funny when you look at it, but then, all right. Yeah. Mesmerizing mindset checklist. Keynote speaker, uh, coach, uh, referred to me by Mark Victor Hansen, all the way from Indianapolis. Welcome to the sales podcast, man. How the heck are you? I'm doing good, Wes. Honored to be with you on your show today. So what is happening, man? You're a keynote speaker. I I speak a little, not as much as you. Um, How are you handling COVID. Let's just get that right out. Are, yeah. are people doing talks? Are they are they doing virtually? Uh, like what's going on there? Well, all my keynotes were instantly canceled yep. uh, along with everybody else's. Yeah. And so there was a couple of uh, people or, or conferences where they were able to pivot and then do virtual programs. So I did a, f- a few virtual keynotes and, uh, and it's going to stay that way, you know, for at least the next year or so. And then we're never going to go back to how it was because the world is pivoting, it's changing, and we have to pivot with us, uh, with it, right? So it's not what shows up, it's how you show up. And so you got to figure out where the trend is. Uh, Dennis Waitley uh, was telling me that. He says, don't watch the fads, watch the trends. And he said, the trend is that we're going more virtual, we're going to have more virtual programs, uh, people are going to be working more from home, and uh, and this is where we're headed, and we have to adapt. So a lot of my programs... Uh, you know, are now virtual and everybody's running to Zoom. Zoom's net worth is more than all the airlines combined, wow. which is a big deal. And that is one of the ways that you spot the trends, right? So, uh, and, you know, so people like you and I who are positioned with podcasts, uh, it's really good because you've been cranking out high quality uh, shows and, and episodes for a long time. So that's really good. A lot of people are scrambling to try to figure that out now. 
Uh, however, whenever there's a challenge, there's an opportunity. You cannot get the rainbow without the rain. It's raining a little bit right now, but the rainbow's coming. <laughs> Bring it on, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah. So what are what are you seeing? Like, what's the feedback from these the leaders at these companies that have you speak? Um, are they like? Are they optimistic? Are they hopeful? Are, are people, are they weathering this storm or is it, um, is it starting to chip away at people's, you know, optimism, their productivity or, or have they pivoted and, and, and people are adjusting? Yeah. Great question. All of the above, all of the above Wes. Uh, again, it really has to do more with your mindset than the economy. You know, I've been in business 25 years, you know, I've, I've been through, um, terrorist attacks. You know, I was supposed to go to, to work the day I watched the uh, uh, a plane fly into the second tower in New York City. I watched it happen live and, uh, and my business disappeared. And then I, you know, I, I came back again and, uh, you know, did really good until, uh, you know, like 2009. And then all of a sudden we had this financial crisis with all the mortgage companies giving loans to everybody without checking on anything. <laughs> and so it crashed our market. And then I've been through uh, my accountant calling up and say, Hey, you owe the IRS, you know, five figures. And I'm like, what? You know, and now I'm going through a, a, you know, global pandemic along with everybody else. And so your business, if you're going to be in the game and you're going to be successful, you've got to learn how to adjust, take a step back, breathe, focus on the outcome that you want, because you got, you know, being brilliant in sales and being brilliant in the basics are always the same. You know, even on your website, you know, you talk about how customers mindset uh, hasn't changed, <laughs> right? Has not changed. A lot of the factors, how we deliver, uh, Amazon changed our world. You know, they own the distribution market in, in the world. And so uh, people's expectations have modified a little bit, but the same rules apply if you're going to uh create a thriving business, or you're going to be a successful uh, sales professional. The first thing you've got to do is get a hold of your mindset, get a hold of your beliefs. So before I was a speaker, you know, I was, all my degrees are in clinical psychology and I was a coach for, uh, and a hypnotist for 30 years. So I was going to school for psychology, but I realized that they weren't, the talk therapy wasn't getting the results that I wanted. And I was working with a lot of people who had post-traumatic stress and so I needed faster tools. So I got into hypnosis and neurolinguistic programming and any kind of peak performance, uh, you know, strategies, uh, tools that were available. And I've been using those for three decades now. I facilitated over 15,000 one-on-one hypnosis sessions. So that's a lot of time walking around in people's unconscious minds. And I discovered the beliefs and, and what drives us at that unconscious level so that you can upgrade your performance and optimize your mind. You know, we, we are constantly updating our smartphones, but most people are walking around with the same MS DOS program that they started with. And we're not, we're not upgrading our brains, our mindsets. And so uh, that's where I learned how to get the biggest results. And, and so leaders of companies, you know, some, the ones that are going to do the best are the ones who are adapting you know, and, and saying, where, where can we take this and how can we solve pain and create more pleasure for our customers and, and add more value and, and care about them and serve them more than our competition. And uh, when you show up in that way, you're always going to be more successful. Can we connect and serve remotely uh, or do we yes. not have a choice? That just <laughs> how it has to now be done. Sure. Sure. We can. You know, we've, we've constantly, uh, you know, I have clients all over the world. So I've been, you know, doing Zoom sessions or telephone coaching or Skype coaching for, you know, 10 years. And uh, when I'm talking to somebody and they're like, oh, well, I would really rather see you in person. I'm like, we get the same results, you know, whether we're in person or we're over the phone or over Zoom, we're going to get the same outcomes. And as long as you come across with certainty, if you have conviction, I was having a, one of my uh, employees one of the time, um, a few years ago, we were having a conversation about a client and I knew what needed to be done and he was resisting. And so um, I was really leaning in, telling him, we need to do this. This is the direction we need to go in. And, uh, and so finally said, okay, I believe you. I'm going to, let's just do it that way. And I said, what turned you around? And he said, well, you seem to believe in it so much. And I know you 
So I figured if you have that much conviction, you know, you must be right. And so he went along with me. (laughs) And I find that customers will do that too. If you believe so much that what you have to offer is going to help them or protect them from getting ripped off from somebody else, you will lean in. Whereas most salespeople will pull back because they have limiting beliefs like, I don't want to be pushy. Yeah. Yeah, I had, I I do a Monday group call and um, I had that exact conversation with the guy that's on it. He's, he's kind of new in sales. Um, He's kind of getting this whole internet marketing thing and it's totally different from his normal career path, but Mm -hmm. he's excited about it. And so, you know, I'm helping him and he was like, well, the software is kind of new and, you know, it, it is, so it's got bugs and blah, blah, blah. You know, what, what do you say? And, you know, the, because it's new, they're offering it at a great price, lifetime access, you know, one price, I mean, super discounted. And I'm like, dude, you, you're not hiding anything, right? Mm-hmm. You tell them it's new. It's mm-hmm. still in beta. That's mm-hmm. why we're giving this lifetime access, mm-hmm. you know, let them make their own decision. Right. I'm like, what if they buy it and they hold on to it for a year before they use it and let it work some kinks out? I mean, they're paying one time what it's going to eventually cost per month. Yeah, that's right. right? I'm like, excellent. just be happy, be confident, you know, cause they're buying you. And if you're not into it, dude, you're not going to sell a damn thing. 100%. <laughs> that's right. You're absolutely right on that. Plus, you know, you let your clients, you, you allow your clients the opportunity to help you to customize the app based on what they like. Sure. So there's yeah, all have, kinds of opportunities. I'll have input. So, you know, I told them I, I want to sort, sift and separate. I don't want to sell. I don't like cajoling and, you know, using NLP and hypnosis to <laughs> trick them into buying. Right? I just, let's just talk. What do yes. you want? Yes. Oh, hey, I have that. Yes. Yes. You know, or I don't, like, Hey, I don't have that. So, you know, right. it, you want a, B, C, and D I can do a, B and C. So is that good enough? Or do you need D? Cause if not, if so, I'll refer you somewhere else. I mean, it's like, it really is that easy, but yes. why do we make it so hard? Why do we sabotage ourselves? Limiting beliefs. So just real quick, um, you wouldn't use hypnosis or NLP to manipulate or trick anybody. You use the tools to understand how people create their reality. So you, you would use the tools to understand how to communicate more effectively with the person you're talking to, how to create faster rapport and trust by knowing, you know, if you watch somebody's eyeballs, if they're looking up and then they're looking down, you can tell if they're creating pictures in their mind and then saying something to themselves about it, then causing them to have a feeling. So it gives you a greater understanding of how to read the customer that you're working with and how to communicate with them in, in their language. And so it creates faster rapport and trust. Like you said, most people, if they think about sales, they think that you're trying to manipulate or talk somebody into doing something that's not good for them. Where sales leaders like you and like I are saying, no, 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 you lead with your ethics, right? One thing about being in the Air Force is they crank out a lot of excellent leaders like you. And you learn to come through with with ethics and with values and you're straight up, you know, if I can help you, I'm gonna, and if I can't, I'm going to try to refer you to someone who can help you, even if they're my competition, that builds trust faster than you trying to use some kind of slick tactics that, you know, people are selling on the internet. So very good. Now to answer your second question, why do people sabotage? It's because we all are, uh, subjected to limiting beliefs of those around us when we're little. You know, we pick up these negative beliefs, these insecure beliefs from our parents, from the town we live in, for the city we live in, from the government, from our religion, you know, all these ideas that I'm not enough, I'm not good enough. And so we have these worries and fears that we're not going to be able to measure up. And then when we go into sales, You know, we often, uh, a lot of people start off, you know, not having a lot of money. And so they project those fears that, that, uh, well, I can't afford this. Why would they, you know, and we limit people with, because of our own limitations, you know, I would have a group of a a few hundred salespeople in a room and I would ask them this question, Wes, I would say, describe salespeople, just yell it out. And they would say, pushy, sleazy, manipulative. Right. And then I and I'd remind them, you're all salespeople. And then they all start (laughs) laughing. Right. And and uh, because that's not how all salespeople are. But if you have a belief that 
people are pushy, then you won't push for the sale because you don't want to be sleazy. Or I'll say something like, uh, you know, um, describe customers. And they'll say things like buyers are liars, you know, only care about the money, you know, and, and uh, um, stab you in the back, no loyalty. And, and I remind them, you are also all customers. And so when we have these limiting beliefs, if you have a belief that buyers are liars and all they care about is the money and they don't care about you, you're not going to want to hang around more customers, are you? And so our mind is filled with these limiting beliefs because more people have a scarcity mindset than a prosperity mindset. And it comes out, uh, especially in the sales profession. Uh, you know, I've asked this before and, and I've gotten different answers um, from different folks. But I, do you think people are more afraid of success than they are of failure? I don't know if their unconscious mind really makes a difference between the two. I think people are just afraid. Right? But people are afraid that no matter what they do, it's not going to work out. So a fear of failure means you try something and it doesn't work out. And then what does that mean about you? Oh, it means that I'm a fraud or I'm not good enough or, you know, all those negative things that people have said are, are right. And so that scares people. So instead of taking the chance of that maybe happening, they just sabotage themselves from even trying. A fear of success, on the other hand, is well, what if I am successful and I lose that connection with others? What if people leave me now because I'm, you know, I'm more successful and they're not and it makes them feel small, right? Or, you know, it changes me in some way because people have this idea that if you become wealthy, it makes you snobbish and rude and evil and, you know, all those limiting beliefs based on all the movies that we've watched on TV. The bad guys are always rich corporations. Okay, so it's been indoctrinated into us. So the real fear, Wes, is that, you know, no matter what happens, I'm not going to end up being happy. And people, even when they have an opportunity to create prosperity, will find a way to get rid of it and not even know they're doing it. So they'll get rid of their prosperity. Make a bunch of money and then they'll blow it. They'll spend it. They'll make risky investments that cost them their fortune. Or they'll have great sales, but there's um, customer complaints. Salespeople don't also want to be customer service people. They want someone else to handle that. And a lot of times it's because, well, I don't want, I feel bad that it didn't go the way that I wanted it to. And, and, you know, I feel bad that I feel like I let them down. So instead of having the conversation and handling it and creating a raving fan, they blow them off, which then creates this negative self-fulfilling prophecy and trashes them. So that's why it's always so important. If you're in sales, you got to understand what beliefs are driving you. And then the tools that you use are going to work with you almost regardless of what the tools are. Right. Um, so how can salespeople or really anybody, um, uh, stay motivated in this climate um, there's a guy I do jujitsu with, and he's not a salesperson. He's one of the technical guys. Mm -hmm. And he said like early on, he, cause we, you know, we canceled jujitsu for a couple months and, mm -hmm. um, and we started coming back and he said, man, how do you do this? Right? I met work from home for 20 years. Mm -hmm. He's like, how do you do this? I got to go in the office. He said, I ate a box of Twinkies yesterday. <laughs> He's a big guy. I can, like a, he's, he's a brown belt in jujitsu. So he's like a trained killer, right? Yes. So he has yes. the discipline to train hard for many, many years to reach this level. Mm -hmm. But as soon as this hits, right, he's in something new. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's gotten better because it's been several months now, but it, yeah. it was a shock to the system. Right. And I think there's mm -hmm. still a shock to the system. I mean, we got the elections tomorrow. So this, this mm -hmm. episode will go live maybe three or four weeks after the election, mm -hmm. either way, half the country is going to be upset. Yes. Uh, yes. So there's always an excuse for not doing your best. But I mean, how, how do people find that? Cause there are, I mean, people are isolated and they're sad. I mean, I think ultimately we're social beings, right? We, yes. we're not supposed to be alone in a cave. Um, yes. What are you telling people like to help them make these, these pivots and, Take on, you know, how do you get them to dance in the rain, man? 
It's an excellent question. And you're right. People have been feeling stir crazy. We have this, um, they're calling it, uh, you know, zoom fatigue, you know, we're, we're so yeah. watching the computer all the time and on our screens all the time. Uh, and, and so the goal is to physically distance, not socially distance. The terminology was wrong from the start. We're supposed to socially become closer together in any way that we can. And it always comes back to personal development. So over, last weekend, uh, I ran what's called a legend summit. And I grabbed the icons of personal development to, to mentor us. So I had Brian Tracy and Les Brown and Bob Proctor and Dennis Waitley and, and 16 other extraordinary human beings all in one place at the same time. And it was amazing. And they were all saying very similar things, like you have to develop yourself. You've got to educate yourself. Now, the gentleman that you talked about that's a brown belt in jujitsu, excellent at being able to, to be tactical and strategize and, and, uh, and move physically. And he also has learned that you take your opponent's energy and use it against them. So the more angry or violent that they come and attack you, the more they're going to hurt for it, <laughs> right? And yeah. in jujitsu, you are staying calm. Well, we've got to have mental jujitsu, right? We've got to take the, the, the mental uh, approach and say, all right, COVID is the next thing that's coming. And 10 years from now, it'll be the next thing that's coming because there's always something that's coming, right? And so how do you prepare for it? You are developing yourself. You are learning. You are training. You know, we, you put hours and hours, days, weeks, and months into you personally, Wes, into uh, being great with jujitsu. We do the same thing with our mind, right? Learning, reading, hanging around other people who have a, a similar mindset for, for personal growth or for service or to, um, to grow and be the best that they can be. So you're hanging around with people. We have more access than we have ever had before. So yes, we're staying at home more. However, we have the ability to talk to people all over the world and we're plugged in 24 hours a day. So use this as an opportunity. I haven't been to my physical office since March, right? And, and I miss it sometimes, but other times I don't miss it at all. And I think I'm going to get rid of it because I like working from home. I've had more quality time with my wife. I've been able to spend so much more time with my children and uh, it's been great that way. So it's not what shows up. It's how you show up that matters more than anything else. Man, can they change on the dime? Can I just make up my mind? All right, I'm tired of being scared. I'm tired of being a wimp. Let's get after it. I mean, is it, you talk about, you know, finding tools to bring about faster results. I mean, this yeah. doesn't have to be a, a 10 year process, right? Oh, no, no, no. That makes me <laughs> freak out. Uh -uh. No, I want stuff happening now like everybody else, right? So let me give you a five-step approach that I use that helps me, and this will help you too. So your answer is yes, you can change on a dime. You got to change the belief. Now, turning that belief in, you know, um, once you adjust your belief, maybe you go from I can't do this to I can, or you start asking a different question like what's the opportunity here? When you start redirecting your mind, then it takes repetition for it to feel comfortable, for it to feel like it's actually going to happen, which is why they say you got to fake it till you become it. You know, with anything else, you got to practice for you to get good at it. And, uh, and so, you know, I've had people say, oh, I tried that positive thinking crap, you know, and, and it didn't work. I'm like, well, how long did you try it for? And they would say, well, I, I was having a bad day and I told myself, oh, it's going to be okay. And then, no, oh, that's a bunch of crap. I'm just fooling myself. So he actually tried it for 30 seconds. Now he had been trying the other way for about 45 years. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, you know, you don't put a seed in the ground and then come back the next day and be mad because it hasn't grown, right? You got to plant those seeds and let them grow a little bit. Yeah. So step one, my five-step process for turning things around. Step one is you pause and breathe. You got to pause. Salespeople, entrepreneurs, business owners, leaders, we like to go fast. It's not about happy or sad. It's about momentum. Are we making progress? And if we're not making progress, if we even slightly feel stuck, we freak out, which is why the TV show is called Shark Tank, because sharks, if they stop swimming, they drown, right? And so many people are drowning in stress right now because they don't know where to go. So instead of trying to move faster, you actually pause. If I'm here in Indianapolis, we're going to have snow pretty soon. If my car's on a patch of ice and I'm jamming on the gas on the accelerator, my tires are going like crazy round and around, but I'm not moving. I'm just burning fuel. Okay. I got to take my foot off the gas, let the tires catch and then proceed. 
So step one is breathe. And when you breathe in through your nose, call it power breathing. So you breathe in through your nose, down to your belly, slowly exhale. Now, Wes, one of the things that I've learned after 30 years of helping people is that your biggest opportunities are hidden in the places you don't want to go. Your biggest opportunities are in the places where you're resisting. Okay. So if I tell you to sit still for 30 seconds and breathe, and that makes you uncomfortable, oh, that's your place to go. That's your breakthrough. Wherever you're resistant, that's where you need to go. If I can't, I must, right? So first step is breathe. Second step is focus on the desired outcome. What I've learned about your brain is that it works like a GPS. Whatever you focus on, it moves you towards. And whatever you think about most of the time, that's what your life's going to become. Well, most of us are focused on what we don't want, what we don't like, and what we don't have, which is why we end up with more of it. So you've got to focus on the outcome that you want and the benefits of those outcomes. So imagine that you end up having a a new set of customers that are your favorite customers, right? And you have people that you're attracting into your life based on referrals. And you don't have to really pitch them on anything because they're already coming in as a warm lead. And then you're already having more money in the bank now so that you feel relaxed and a sense of ease instead of feeling pressured to close the sale. So you come across prosperous instead of needy, okay? So you would focus on the outcome that you want and why you would want it. The third step is you want to take one step forward in any direction, just take a step forward. If you're driving in fog and you can only see 10 feet in front of you, drive the 10 feet, then the next 10 feet will appear, okay? So drive the first 10 feet, take that first step. As you start moving towards what you want, you've clarified what you want because most people don't have clarity. Once you've clarified what you want and you took a step towards it, then you start watching for the clues. I call them miracles. I've just finished a book called One Belief Away with uh, Joe Vitale. And Joe says, money loves speed, right? Money loves speed and there's miracles all over the place. You're just not tuning into it. You're not paying attention to it because you're not looking for miracles. You're looking for how am I going to survive? How am I going to pay this bill? right? So we're coming from scarcity instead of abundance. So when you start watching for clues to show up, someone calls you, all of a sudden you see a, an article that pops up, you know, on how to handle stress, you know, or all of a sudden a new podcast from uh, the sales whisperer pops up and you're like, oh, I need to listen to this podcast, right? And we're talking about, you know, being a giver, right? Givers gain. So be a giver. So you go to Wes's uh, podcast site, you give it five stars, you give it a glowing, grow, a, a glowing review, and then you share it with your friends. Now you just made a deposit into your karma account. You're doing something kind for somebody else without expecting anything back. And as you do that, that prosperity flows into your life, right? So you're watching for those clues. And then the final step is when those clues show up, act on them. Money loves speed. Act on those clues, Because when you see an opportunity, maybe it's a new friend you're going to call, or maybe it's an opportunity to work with a different company, or maybe it's you're going to change your, uh, if you have the ability to change your pricing structure, or you go learn how to be a better communicator. You know, most salespeople are not the best communicators. They're good at talking, but they're not very good at listening. And the best influencers in the world are the best listeners, not the best speakers. So go up your skills when it comes to how you are communicating and then go practice on the people that you love the most, be a better listener for your spouse, for your kids, for your friends, for your neighbors. And as you put those into place, so step one is power, breathe and pause. Step two, focus on the desired outcome and the benefits of that. Step three, just take one action in one direction. Step four, and and step three, if you're not sure what that one step is, go for a walk, go take a shower right? Go watch a YouTube video because I'm sure Wes, you've had this happen where you had the best idea in the shower and you're trying to dry off a hand to so you can leave a message on your phone. So you remember, <laughs> you know, our best ideas come when we're in the shower, when we're not thinking about things. So, and then of course, watch for the miracles and when they show up, act on them. When you do that, you will be just joyful and relieved at the same time at the magic that starts to happen in your life. I like those. I was combining them. So I'm glad you went over them again. Cause so the clues are are acting on them. Uh, All right. So three was take one step. Mm -hmm. Four was finding, find the clues, find the miracles. 
Yeah. Take one step and then start watching for what's the next move I yep. need to make and prioritize that. Yep. Yeah. Is you want to be productive, not busy. Yeah. Um, and it's so, it's so easy. I, I'd say I gave that same advice today again on the call. Like I was telling my guys, like figure out all the busy work and you got to set it aside so it doesn't creep into your vital work, mm-hmm. you know, and in sales, your vital work is prospecting, right? I got a couple guys that are employees or salespeople. I'm like, you got to be reaching out, mm-hmm. you know, do the other stuff for sure when it comes up, but you got to set time. But again, it goes back, I guess, to the scarcity, the, the limiting mindset. We don't want to be rejected. So we don't make those outbound calls. Mm-hmm. So we'll help somebody in the office and make the excuse. Oh, it was important. They needed some help on this. And like, sure. Oh, dude. <laughs> Are we just, we're just weak, frail creatures. Is that, is that why we just keep doing the things we shouldn't? <laughs> it's the beliefs, Wes. I'm telling you, you know, it is the beliefs and that people have that they don't even know are there. And there's an old phrase that says, you can't see the label when you're in the bottle. Right. It's hard to be objective with ourselves. And I mean, I've I've been in the heads of thousands and thousands of sales professionals and I know the beliefs, you know, and you do, too. You know that that I'm not enough or that I'm going to be rejected or that I want people to like me or, you know, I don't want to interrupt people. I don't want to get yelled at. Right. And so instead of thinking that I'm going to call some new friends. You know, I'm going to pick up my ATM machine today, you know, and make some new friends and see what happens, you know, because that's what that's what you do when you're prospecting. You call up you and you call up offering value instead of trying to get something, you're trying to give something right. And, and you show up with a different mindset. And then, you know, when you have beliefs that you're here to serve and that you believe in what you're doing and that you're adding value to people's lives. And if you don't reach out to them, then it's like you have the life preserver and they're in the water over their head and you're afraid to throw them the buoy, right? You throw it, <laughs> right? Yeah, but what if they don't like it? They're drowning, <laughs> okay? So, or they don't know they're drowning and you're going to take care of them. So if you start to view yourself as a trusted advisor, as someone who has something that people need that's going to improve the quality of their life, then it changes your relationship to your phone and to reaching out. Yeah. So however you position it, though, prospecting is a challenging profession, right? By nature, people don't like to get on the phone and call strangers all day long. So you have to keep yourself filled up whether listening to podcasts like yours, whether hanging around with other people who are go-getters, not the people who are slacking, right? But other people who are crushing it because then that energy is contagious, right? It'll rub off on you. If you don't know these people in particular, the people who are usually crushing it are writing programs, having podcasts, you know, interviewing awesome people who are crushing it. So you have access that way. And most of that information is free, right? Your 400 episodes, you know, are free. That's incredible training. So uh, we have the resources. We just have to plug in. And I will ask salespeople all the time, uh, you know, I have a 500 people in the room and I'll say, raise your hand the last time you listened to a sales training program or a personal development program. And I will usually get 10 people that raise their hands. And every single time, those are the top 10 people in the company. Mm-hmm. So there is your recipe. Mm-hmm. So is it safe to say if we're not where we want to be, there's some type of limiting belief we need to find and overcome? Yes. Now, I would not have believed that five years ago even. But I've been pushing this really hard and challenging people and talking to the, you know, the most successful people that I've, uh, you know, that are alive. And asking and digging into their mind and understanding their strategies and what makes them successful or what made them fall apart. Because many of the people that I know had millions of dollars and lost millions of dollars and then made them all back, which is an extraordinary gut punch, you know, and then the fact that they were able to make it back is even more extraordinary. And so I I just kept digging and digging and digging and it always comes back to a belief, whatever that that belief may be, you know, a belief that I'm not enough 
or I'll be rejected, or I'm a fraud, or people are going to leave me, or I'm going to disappoint people, um, people will abandon me, you know, these deep down fears that we have that we don't even know are there. And, uh, you know, and it can be upgraded so easily, but most people don't really know how to do that, which is why I wrote the One Belief Away book. And then even if, from my point, I'm like, all right, well, I know how to do it all the way up to here, but I haven't got this far yet. There's a gap that I'm missing. And instead of just faking my way through it, I found a mentor, you know, Dr. Joe Vitale, who has gotten that far and took it to a whole other level that I wasn't at yet. So instead of just writing the book, you know, with what I knew, I wrote the book and then tried to model what I'm teaching by getting one of my mentors to help me go to that next level. And so we put the book together in that way. And, uh, and it's going to be, you know, it's going to sell a gazillion copies because it's exactly what everybody needs. Now, of Ooh. course, people don't buy what they need. So we'll have to deliver it in a way where it's going to make them more money or get them out of their panic attacks. <laughs> but, um, but that's what we do. And, uh, and so, yeah, so 100%, it comes back to the beliefs that we have. If there's something that is a block for you with your marriage or with your relationships or with your health or with your finances, uh, your spirituality, how much fun you allow yourself to have. There's always a belief driving it. Can, well, you mentioned mentors, right? Can, can I fix myself? Can I heal myself? Can I make these changes from a book, from a podcast? Do I, do I need to hire a mentor or a group, you know, for, for faster change or deeper change? Excellent question. So you can learn a lot and grow from self-study, but the biggest transformations are going to come from having an outside pair of eyes watching you and feeding back the beliefs that are coming out of your mouth that you don't even realize are coming out of your mouth because you're so used to you. You're having a conversation with yourself since you were born. So you won't notice your own blind spots. You won't notice that you're saying things and, and people are feeding it back. And you're like, oh, wow, I didn't realize I was telling myself that, you know, like, oh, my God, it's such a stressful day. I feel like I'm just going to shoot myself in the head. You know, I all the all the only luck I have is bad luck, you know, and your brain's in there. It's like a genie saying, oh, OK, as you wish. <laughs> right. And so right. so you need someone to feed it back to you. And uh, because otherwise it's very difficult to be objective with yourself. And then even when someone does start to feed it back to you, a lot of times, instead of going, oh, okay, I'm going to take that and run with it. Oh, no, no, we resist. Mm -hmm. There's three phases to a breakthrough. I've seen it consistently. Phase one is resistance with pushback. Not quite sure. Phase two is confusion. Maybe you're starting to let go of the old way because it's sabotaging you and you know based on your results, but you haven't grabbed onto the new way yet. So you're kind of in limbo. And then if you keep moving forward, it's kind of like uh, you're out of hell, but you're not in heaven. You're in this purgatory. And what most people do in purgatory is they go back to hell because at least it's warm there. They know hell. They have certainty in hell, right? If you'd hang on a little more, you get to heaven. <laughs> you know, you get to what you want. And so, so the third phase is the breakthrough. And that's when you have a new belief that creates a new set of feelings that causes you to focus on new information. And then you take new action. And then that action provides new you know, um, outcomes and feedback. And yeah. that's how a breakthrough happens. Yeah. The Israelites, they only wandered for a little while and they're like, Moses, we're going back, man. At least we had food. Yeah. We were slaves, but we had food. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Like, 40 yeah. years, man, 40 years. Right. Come so on, people, <laughs> but yeah, and that, uh, we do. Right. We, they yearn for slavery because at least they had a, they knew where their next meal was coming from. It's hard to give up that, that need for comfort, that need for certainty. Yeah. You know, the, the devil you know is better than the one you don't. And so people hang on to that right. even when they know. I mean, when you look at, you know, what we do with alcohol or sugar or cigarettes, you know, gambling, porn, people are scared to let go of that because it's what they know. If you had another tool, people would upgrade. But most people don't have another tool. And so they, even if they get away from stuff that's hurting their life, they end up going back and relapsing because it's what they know. Right. So personal yeah. development is 
necessary, mandatory. It's a must, especially, especially in the sales profession, because the sales profession is the greatest profession on earth, but it will chew you up if you are not continually developing yourself. Yeah. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) I've been chewed up. I've seen a lot of people uh, not quite as stubborn as me chewed up and leave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It chewed up all my hair. That's why I have this giant forehead now. <laughs> all that stress. <laughs> oh man. Very nice. So you, you've got a, a checklist for our listeners, mesmerizing mindset checklist, and it's, it's at your website, right? Tim Shore and it's S H U R R Tim Shore.com. Yes. Right. Um, I'm linking as well to one of your books, Get Out of Your Way, How to Eliminate Self-Sabotage and Win Your Life. Uh, and you wrote another one as well. Right? Is that the yellow one behind you there? On the, on the it shelf? is. Yeah. Oh, no, it's another one. I don't even have a cover for it yet. It's hot oh, off okay. the press. Yeah, we're going to launch it in January. I wanted to launch it now. But Joe's like, no, we're going to have the one belief away for the whole year going to make nice. a whole year out of it. I'm like, awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So, but the get out of your way book is awesome because I wrote that book like a seminar, like a $5,000 seminar. And it takes you through step one, step two. So if you have no idea how your mind works or how to do any of this stuff, I literally take you by the hand or like, this is step one, this is step two. And right. if you, and it's only 20 bucks. So, I mean, and the, uh, um, And the checklist that we're giving away for free, if you go to timshire.com and just scroll down the page, um, two things will happen. One, I'll email you that checklist. And then it literally is a step-by-step. Here's what you do to create a prosperity mindset. Okay. And then from there, you'll be on my newsletter. And I have so many extraordinary tools and access to so many incredible people that, you know, we can help you with whatever it is that you're looking for. And uh, so it'll be fun. Very nice. I'm yeah. on the site right now. I see it. <laughs> Very cool. Well, um, I hope you don't get too much snow and um, mm-hmm. we'll see how this election goes. But uh, I'm signing up for the newsletter because, you know, I think regardless, the world will continue on um, Wednesday, the day after the election. <laughs> you, know, you know, Wes, I believe you. I think you're right. You know, Abraham Lincoln once said that the best way to create the future or yeah, the best, the best way to predict the future is to go ahead and create it. Yeah. And so regardless of what happens in the White House, what's more important is what's happening in your house, right? Mm-hmm. Regardless of what's happening with our economy, what happens is the choices that you make today. And are you going to stew in stress? Or are you going to focus on adding value to somebody's life? Because I got into psychology 30 something years ago because I had so much anxiety, so much insecurity, so much fear and self-loathing. I did not feel good about myself. And the thing that I've learned is that whenever I start to get nervous, if even with all the experience I have every once in a while, I just start getting nervous, right? I started to have that anxiety creep in. And the fastest way to shift it is by focusing on how can I help someone else feel good today? Yeah. How can I add some value? Can I send an email? Can I send a handwritten card to someone who's not expecting it? Who's someone that I haven't talked to in a while and I value our relationship, right? Or what can I do to make my my immediate family feel loved and cared for today and give them my full attention? Or what can I do to uh, call up one of my customers just to check in and see how they're doing? There's no problems. I'm not selling them anything. I'm just giving them a call to see how you're doing with all these things going on. Because in those moments, you create a bond. And customer loyalty occurs in those moments with those bonds because you're going a step above what anybody else would bother to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's great advice. I always tell people you you don't feel sorry for yourself when you're serving at the food kitchen, you know, uh, (laughs) that's really good food pantry, right? It's like, that's right. That's true. Yeah. Cause I've done that. Right. Yep. I'm scooping out the food and the, the spaghetti and meatballs and the green beans and I'm handing them to them and making sure I'm shaking everybody's hands that would make eye contact with me because yep. many people in homeless sh- shelters um, won't make con- eye contact, you know, and just helping them to know that someone loves them and cares about them. Yep. Right. That they're not cast aside. And you're right. So when you uh, when you show up in that way, when you can't help but lift, but go up when you lift someone else up. Yep. Right. So the other is true as well. You can't go, you can't help but go down when you push someone else down. 
And I hope that we learn this from, I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat. As soon as we go in, if I go into a company and I divide the company in half and I silo people and I start creating competition against each side, that company is going to get crushed financially. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening in our country. As long as we keep calling ourselves this or that and labeling ourselves and dividing ourselves, we are not going to be able to be a united front. So we have to go back to being Americans again instead of getting caught up in these political parties and then tearing ourselves out from the inside. Rome fell from within, not from an outside attack. America is the new Rome. We got to make sure that we learn from our history. Yep. Amen. All right. Tim, I'm sure. Gonna, I'm going to pass that plate around now. If you feel like making a donation. <laughs> dig deep. <laughs> dig deep, brother. Brothers and sisters, dig deep. <laughs> Do it for Jesus. <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> oh man all right well good stuff thank you sir all the way from indiana thanks for coming to the show man it's been great thank you wes it's been a pleasure all right man. have a great day you too dig deep until it hurts my brothers and sisters amen uh but look it doesn't have to hurt right sales shouldn't be painful you should be making money it should be predictable your customers should be happy they should be singing your praises you need to get over the negative beliefs you have about salespeople because you is our one. Um, you need to understand how to sell in this socially distant environment. Um, you need the m uh, mental jujitsu. So, um, you know, I like the course um, he's created. Um, I like his approach. You know, like he says towards the end there, when those clues show up, act on them. Money loves speed. I've, I've written blog posts about, you know, motion beats meditation. Be productive, not just busy. So in the show notes, you know, I link to a lot of the the blog posts and, and other interviews that related to this. Talking about you can't read the label from inside the bottle. How your phone is your handheld ATM machine. You know, I've, I dive into all of these topics as well on the site. So avail yourself of that. Okay, it's all free content. And then if you want to continue, you know, and go deeper, go faster, right? That's where the implementors comes in. You know, come hang out every Monday. Let me help you sell more faster, higher margin with less stress and more fun, please. All right, come on. Let's do it. Make it happen. Hey, thanks for listening. I'll go sell something.